Good evening. Today is Tuesday, May 31st. This is Modesty, your host of Celebrity Spotlight Live, and welcome to our talk show, where we take you beyond the lights, the cameras, and the action of celebs, authors, actors, radio hosts, performing artists, businessmen and women, and other noteworthy professionals. Tonight, our guest hails from the South. North Carolina to be exact. He's an actor, a host, and he's the owner of the number one fastest growing talk show called The Big Scoop with Who. None other than Michael Cooper. How are you doing this evening, Michael? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for accepting our invitation and for being our guest tonight. So glad that you were able to accept. We're excited, and we want you to share with us for the next 30 minutes all about your journey as an actor, a host, and also the owner of the Big Scoop uh, with Coop Talk Show. But let me start by saying this. During my tenure in high school, I was part of the drama class, and we did plays like My Fair Lady, etc., and it was so much fun, and sometimes... I wish I had even continued uh, acting or in that vein, but you know how it is when you're in high school, you have so many different things that you want to do and want to be. So I ventured off okay. into other things, but acting is so exciting. So with that thought in mind, let's get started, Michael. Tell us, when did you first become interested in acting? Well, with me, it actually started when I was a child. Um, I actually did little school plays, and when I was inside of the school play, um, I used to act the fool. I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, and it was fun. Um, I had a lot of people laughing. They were like, man, you are a natural at this. And I backed away from it for a few years, and I ended up getting in contact with um, one of my friends for a few years now, named Nick Dalmacy. He is the... um, owner and director and producer and everything for Dalmatian Film. And oh, okay. he offered me a voiceover position. And from there, um, I actually got into a movie called Sins of the Wicked. And mm-hmm. from there, I actually had, um, I had my chance to do it. And from there, it was, um, it was just smooth selling. So I'm actually starting on my third one. And okay. it's a wrap from there. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. So the, the, your act, you're on your third you're on your third play or your third movie at this point? Third movie. Third movie. Oh, what's, mm-hmm. what's the name of it, if you can release it? I don't... <laughs> um, sure. It's called Sins of the Wicked, Sons of the Wicked, and Legacy of the Wicked. Okay, so it's like a series. Kind yes, of uh-huh. Oh, right, we're actually okay, trying to break sounds... it in. That mm-hmm. sounds like a lot of fun. So is there a particular, <laughs> it does, it sounds like a lot of fun. Is there a particular genre? Do you like a uh, uh, romantic comedy, drama? Uh, you like thrillers? Uh, you like sci-fi? Uh, you like fantasy? That's something similar to like uh, Games of Thrones and things of that nature. Right. Uh, what, what kind of genre do you particularly like? Believe it or not, I'm a fan of all. And that means um, mm, from drama, answer. thriller, <laughs> action, all of it. It's, um, it. it's actually, there's a piece of every type of genre that catches my attention. And okay. it can be from sci-fi from the 80s or back to the future all the way up to now. And, um, you know, action movies, you know, when it's action, they, you know, it always catches people's attention because of the movement, of the fighting, right. the violence and everything. So, yeah, that fan of them all. true. That's a that's a great question. Um, let's segue mm-hmm. into this. Um, on the uh, l- uh, the lane of movies, as we're talking about movies, there have been recently a lot of, and there are even more to come. Uh, dramatic, I guess you could call them slave movies. Right. And there are so many different opinions about uh, these types of movies. I understand both sides. Uh, those who want to see them and those who don't want to see them. As it relates to uh, slave movies, what is your take on them? Um, Is it a great opportunity for the person, especially if the African-American who's directing and producing, or if you were giving the opportunity to be cast in a slave movie, would you take it or would you bypass it? 
That's a great question. Um, to answer the first part of the question, there are pros and cons to, you know, doing slave movies because people in mm-hmm. school, they really don't have a true Black History Month anymore. So they have to rely on movies, television, to relive, not relive, but to actually know their history of what happened. Um, would I, and at the same time, I'm like, how many times can you really redo a slave movie <laughs> yeah. without, yeah, telling the same story? So it's, it's like a pro and a con for both sides of it. Um, would I ever do a slave movie? That's something I would really have to sit down and think of. That's, um, I can watch them. But okay. I couldn't be, I couldn't play the role of Coach Kente and keep getting hit with a whip. I'm going to put it like that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I couldn't okay, because so the director would be calling you would definitely not audition. Cut. You wouldn't audition for that part right there. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, because the director would be calling cut all the time. Cause I'd be breaking the chains like, okay, you hit me one more time with that whip. <laughs> he said he'd be I know breaking. it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> he said he'd be breaking the chains. You know, it was difficult uh, for me. The, the series started yesterday, and it's going to go through Thursday. Yeah. And I looked at it just a little. It was too. I, I I couldn't take it after a certain point, and I don't think I'm going to return to it. If I do, it might be just a spot check or to spot view it. Right. But to actually sit down and look at all of it again, it's graphic. And uh, as I stated earlier, there are some more coming out too. Um, uh, Birth of a Nation which there's yep. a lot of buzz about that. Uh, Nate Parker, mm-hmm. he uh, re- wrote that and directed that, so a lot of people are looking forward to that. Okay, now, with that thought in mind, have you ever desired to uh, write or direct? Uh, I mean, you've, how long have you been in it, actually? Let me ask you that first, and then we can well, you could probably answer that question better. Right. I- I've been in the business since 2012. As as oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So I've done that. Um, as far as it goes for writing and directing, I I have a I don't have a strong passion for the writing part. Oh. Um, I can do it. I have done it before, but it's just to the point where for me writing six to eight scripts, trying to turn them in for approval, um, mm. re-editing and everything like that. That that's really not my thing. I'm the person that's going hand me the script. Okay, this is what I have to do. Put the camera on me. I'm ready to go. So that's the type that's of guy good. I am. Yes. That's good. So you are a natural, but it sounds like you already knows the you already know the ins and outs um, of acting because right. there's a lot that goes uh, you know into it, and you definitely have to have a uh, you know a good memory. <laughs> that's true. You know, that is and true. you have to you know a, a good handle you know, in the English language, et cetera. But it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. very exciting. Um, who is your favorite male actor and your favorite female actor? Well, as far as it goes for male actor, it's like I have some for each genre. Because as you hmm. know, because I know you're, you're a big movie fan, I believe you are, and it, <laughs> some actors cannot do each genre. You have hmm. someone that can actually – do a great action movie, okay. but they purely suck when it comes to drama. So, okay. you know, yeah. Um, but I can sit there and I can watch different ones. Um, from, from like Morris Chestnut, he can do movies, and he's good in television series also because um, what's the name of his movie that's um, his show is out Rosewood. on TNT? Rosewood. Um, Rosewood, Rosewood. Yeah. And you see, he's, he seems like he's a natural for that part. Okay, but yeah. I can't see him doing a hardcore action movie. Um, really? Okay. He, I, I really couldn't, and I will tell you the reason why. Because mm-hmm. he seems like he's more natural himself in Rosewood. If you ever seen, like, an interview or a conversation with this guy, he he actually is, like, a laid-back guy. Yeah, um, yeah he's not the – I'm about to pull the knife out. I'm about to cut your butt. Yet. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, and like I said, there's so many different ones. Um, then you have Jet Li. Dude is yes. great in action. Yes, yes he is. But, he is. but can you picture him doing a kissing scene or in a, in a romantic drama? You, you, it's hard to see that. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> it is very hard to see that. <laughs> um, females. Now, you have um, – now, there's one female that is out um, – that she's played so many different um, genres, and 
I don't know why her name is not coming to me, but she played in, um, oh, my gosh. She was, she was in Drumline. Um, and she was the, the woman that Nick Cannon was um, falling in love with. But she also okay. played an action movie, too. Um, okay. She and seems like she can, yeah, but you know who I'm speaking of. She yeah. can play. She can play different genres and fit. She's versatile. She, mm-hmm. Right. She is. She's very versatile, and it shocked it shocked me when I saw it, and I became a fan. I really did. Mm. I thought she was gonna be more of a let me do a little drama right. with a little suspense, and that's it. But when I saw her kicking butt in a movie, I was like, okay, hey, you really got trained for this. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about being an actor and actress. You get the opportunity to be people that you are not, and you get uh-huh. the opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, not to, 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 to do things you normally would not do. That's the beauty of acting, and it's not easy, and that's why they call it an art, and they call it a skill, and uh, it takes, you know, a while to get to certain places. I mean, it takes a while to, to be able to do certain genres. Like you said, every actor, actor right. cannot do um, every single drama but every any That's kind true. and all kinds of different genres but um mm-hmm. it's what, whatever you're passionate about that is definitely the thing that you're going to ace but uh an actor or an actress who is versatile their opportunities are limitless whereas right. someone who is basically known uh, people don't like to get typecast either you know, that's like let's say you've all, all, you've only seen them in romantic comedies. Let's say like Martin Lawrence, the major- he's a comedian. <laughs> so the majority of this, okay, the majority of the movies that he 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 stars in, they have some kind of a comedic line in it. It's a it, oh, comedic plot. You know, it's the, right. the most serious movie, and that was even funny too. That Martin Lawrence ever played in was there's a thin line between love and hate, and there was a oh lot of God, funny, yeah. that, you see, there was a lot of funny parts, yeah. and that that was funny too. But that was one of the most <laughs> serious um, movies he's ever done. Okay. Um, now, when did you become interested in hosting, and oh, what wow. kind of events have you hosted? Okay. Um, I have, well, of course, you know, like you said at the beginning of the show, for everyone that's listening, I am the host of the Big Scoop with Poop. Um, and before I even get into that, um, I didn't actually start my hosting right there on my show. Um, I've actually hosted um, local things as far as it goes for, like, um, parties for DJs. I wasn't okay. a DJ, but, you know, like, after parties, receptions, yes. you know, right. I emceed, did okay. stuff like that. Um, and I was told when I was younger, I was nobody was a stranger to me because, you know, down in the South, they actually have that cliche of Southern hospitality. And right. I would, right, and I would walk up to a stranger and just hold a conversation like it ain't nothing. And this was back in the 80s. So I'm an 80s baby. So oh, okay. with that happening, mm-hmm, March 28th, 1980, that's actually my birthday, um, when I learned how to actually talk and walk, I would go up there and just have conversations with people. Mm-hmm. But the fast forward up, that never left me. My, my elementary school teachers told me, and told my parents actually, that when I get older, I need to have a job dealing with talking because mm-hmm. that's what I do best. That's right. Right. I, I kind of felt it insulting at first, but then I mm. said, wait a minute. Mm. I can do something like this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, when I got older, the, the more I actually grew, the more I recognized the skill of actually having a show like, like you, yourself, Ma, you actually doing your thing, um, and you're really well at what you do. So, Thank you know, you. a lot of people, yes, a lot of people can't do this. And right. people are actually nervous and scared, but um, back in 2012, mm-hmm. I was sitting home, and I was watching the Steve Harvey show, and I was mm-hmm. listening to the Steve Harvey morning show that morning. I was like, why? I was sitting here in North Carolina, and you know, in certain states, if you're not in New York, L.A., it's hard to actually get out there and, yes. you know, get known. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So with me sitting in North Carolina, I was like, okay, I'm in North Carolina, but I can do what Steve is doing. I'm not saying I'm the best at it, but I can do right. what he's doing. Right. So I went outside one day, and I told my next-door neighbor, I was like, I'm going to start a radio show. Mm. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah, it just came in my mind. 
and it was a commercial that came on. I just put on my shoes, went outside and told them that I saw them. Next thing I know, two weeks later, I'm actually doing my plot for my show, trying to figure out how am I going to do my show. Wow. And next thing I know, um, about a month or two later, I said, okay, I'm getting on Blog Talk Radio, and I started my show. And my first guest was my um, movie director, Nick Dalmacy. So I said, let me see. Right, started with him, then started with some other people that was in the movie, the cast and crew, and then I moved up and actually started interviewing people like Jasmine Lewis from the Barbershop 1, 2, 3, um, mm-hmm. people from Grey's Anatomy. Um, I hit up a lot of people, so it's all about networking. And when I did that, it happened. Wow, that is yeah. amazing. You said mm-hmm. it, and then you went and you did it. You prophesied, this is what I'm going to do, and you went and, and right. you made it happen. And that is a true testament to uh, to doing something that you like, and not just talking about something, but you you were being about it, and you are about it. Right, thank And I you. guess the, the inspiration you. was in you for you to put on your t- your, <laughs> your shoes and just go over to your neighbor and say, look, I'm going to restart a show. And you actually did it. That is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And you said you network. Because sometimes is it difficult getting, I would say, celebrities and and because and, 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 many of them are busy. Some of them are not as busy as others. But sometimes it's right. kind of difficult, um, you know, getting them to come on the show. Uh, did mm-hmm. you have to pull teeth? Uh, what, how was that process? How did that process go? You know, there's a saying out there saying 100 no's equal one yes. And basically, um, I, when I first tried to get celebrities, when I first tried to get celebrities, um, I was talking to the agents, managers, and there was like, basically I felt like it was like, I don't know who you are. Why am I responding back to you? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, and, you get that feeling. hmm Right, right, and when you and I think the worst case is when you never, if you don't get a yes or a no, they just ignore your whole email or your contact or whatever. I think that's the worst case scenario. I would rather have a no kiss my butt, you ain't nobody compared to you never <laughs> saw my stuff or heard you. anything. Right, right. So, <laughs> so basically, when I got that very first major celebrity that was known, they took a chance on me. And wow. that publicist and manager to this day, you know, call me every other week. And other agents in Hollywood, down in Atlanta, up in the NY, they're, they're hitting me up. And they're like, I want you to interview this person Isn't right here. Isn't that what a blessing? Yeah. So, yes, I, I mean, I give it all to God. That's, that was not me. I did not have any skill in that. If I prayed and I had faith in it. And what happened from there? The Lord opened up doors, and now I'm known on the West Coast. I'm known in Hollywood. I'm known in New York. I'm known in Atlanta, Florida. I'm getting known all the way around. And my website, everybody that's listening, when you get a chance, check out my website, thebitscooprecoup.com. I was on there, and I saw the pictures of you sitting. Right. You, there were some pictures of you even sitting with some celebrities, and there's some pictures. Right. That's what led me to ask you that question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and... And that's inspired. the thing, these people, thank you. Thank you very much. But that's how it actually started for me on the Big Scoop with Coop. It's still going strong. Um, I'm in season three of my show now. So um, still got some big names coming in. I've actually talked to the original content director of HBO a few weeks ago. Um, like I said, Jasmine Lewis. It, then just go to my website, everybody that's listening. Click on the photos or click on the episode tab. You'll see all the episodes I've done. Um, and everything. So, yes, I mean, that's what I'm doing modesty. I'm trying to actually make a name out here, and I feel like you've got to make noise. Yeah, definitely. You You definitely. And I'm I'm encouraged. I am very encouraged because uh, I've I've interviewed quite a number of people uh, in the religious arena industry, and Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing more now uh, in secular because, as I stated earlier, what we do is we – I do – which we, I do the same thing that you do. We, I interview, and I've talked right. about the journey of individuals, and especially, you know, if they have a movie or something coming out. And um, uh-huh. the best thing route for me probably to take would probably be to pick up the phone because, you know, I've reached out to you uh, through Twitter, and sometimes you, will, you might get a response, you might not. People will even follow you and not even talk to you. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's very true. You, I I've don't understand there. it. You know what I'm saying? They'll follow you before you follow them. 
and then when right. you DM them, you don't hear anything. So listen, it is what it is. But I'm the type of person uh, to 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 keep things uh, moving and to keep things going. And uh, mm-hmm. oh, great, we have about ten more minutes, which is a good thing. Now let cool. me ask you this: Who would you most like to, if if given the opportunity to interview any two people in the world? Wow. Any two. Who would it be? You know what? It, the first one I want to say is going to be a selfish show because it's for <laughs> me only. And that would be my favorite female music artist, and that's Lauren Hill. I have to wow. get Lauren on the show. Yes, I do. Um, I would love to hear her ups and downs because, you know, if, if you follow Lauren Hill, you know she's had a – she had ups and downs in her life like a lot of people have. And, yeah, yeah and her music – speaks through her pain and her joy. So, you know, mm-hmm. I would love to have her on the show. Um, let me see. Who else in the world? Good gosh. You know what? My, you know what, got me on that one. It's interesting that, that you mentioned Lauren Hill because I don't know if you've reached out to her recently, but this might even be a good time for her to talk uh, on Blog Talk Radio because at the present mm-hmm. uh She's, I'm not going to say she's been getting into any hot water, but right. people have been complaining about her re- lately. Because really? Of her, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was supposed to do a concert. I'm trying to remember what state it was in. And she got there maybe an hour, an hour and a half late. And for some Ooh. reason or another, she's known for being very late. She's not known for being tardy and then having yeah. all kinds of excuses. So um, I think a, a promoter even got on Twitter and uh, he, he said some things that weren't pleasant about her. I don't know if he was laughing wow. or joking. But um, right now, yeah, she's, people are considering um, not even going to her concerts now. Um, not a whole, whole lot of people, I would say. I really don't know how many in number, but she's been in the news mm-hmm. lately. She was even on The Breakfast Club, which which brings me to this. Um, you know you know Angela, right? I call her Lady Angela. <laughs> yeah, I know. We know of each other, but yeah. Okay, got you. Got you. Uh-huh. Yes, because she had wished you well, um, I right. think, a week or two ago. She said, I hope the show does great or something like that. I right. said, oh, that's mm-hmm. good. He's, you know, he's getting yeah. around. Like you said, networking is so important. And sometimes people are like uh, walls, and sometimes you have to keep knocking on the wall and knocking on the wall until it starts coming right. down. You know, many people mm-hmm. who are in the business, they know that because they've done that for themselves. Okay, now the other part of the question, you said Lauren Hill, and who else? Um, overall, you know what, that is a very – and that's a very good question because I have a list inside my house <laughs> of so many people that I want wow. to come on my show. Yeah, I, right. like in my, when I say that, I really don't hardly get any sleep. I, wow. I really don't because, like, I put on Facebook earlier today. Um, of course, you know, I told everybody I'm going to be right here. Every spot right. Right now. I've got there. I'm definitely coming on the show. I'm glad I'm on this show. And then I was like, after that, going to the gym, got to do some stuff with my show, and I pray right. and hope I get at least five hours of sleep. And, at least. But to be truthful, right, at least. And to be truthful, it may not be happening. But the thing is, I when I'm at home and I'm not having a show or I'm not doing anything in particular, I start, I have a wish list for the people mm-hmm. I want on the show. And you see, with my show, I do talk about how people, like how you do, starting their career, their success, their journey, give yeah. advice on how to get into their career and promote what they have going on. Um, and, you know, it's like, there are so many people that's A-listers, B-listers, C-listers, D-listers. I want them all on my show. It's not the I got to have the biggest name out there I'm because totally everybody understand. has a story. Right. Yeah, that everybody so has a true. story, and I want people to hear it. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. Um, modestly, I'm going to get back with you on that one. I'm going to let you tweet out that second name <laughs> when I get when I actually get it. I'm going to let you tweet that out worldwide. So, everybody, make sure you follow Modesty on Twitter because I'm going to give her that second name. For her to actually <laughs> tweet out to everybody, because yeah, I can't, I can't even think of who would be. On it's the top okay. Of the list. It's okay. Yeah. If you have a different, mm-hmm. a whole lot of li- uh, people on that list. Listen, it's totally understandable, and I understand where you're coming from. It's not just one person. I mean, what if Oprah had said that? 
I just want this right. message. I mean, you, you, you just can't do it. But um, mm-hmm. you did say Lauren Hill, so that's, <laughs> yeah. that's good enough. <laughs> that is good enough. Okay, we got yeah. five more minutes left. So tell us how can people get in touch with you? What What is your Twitter handle and oh, also yeah. your your website address? Okay. Now, everybody, make sure you go to my website. That's www.thebigscooprecoup.com. Um, you can see a whole bunch of things up there, like Modesty said earlier, photos. You can hear and see episodes, much more um, up there. Um, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the Big Scoop Recoup. That's actually my fan page. Um, and also on Twitter, you can find me at MC. OOP317. Make sure you guys follow me for the latest um, shows. Um, me and Modesty, we will be in contact with each other, so I will have her bugging out on Twitter also. So I'm going to say something crazy to her sooner or later that's going to actually make her bug <laughs> out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, watch. Just watch. I'm going to say something silly out the blue, and oh, I'm, I'm just going to try to catch you off guard. So, yeah, oh, make Lord, sure you follow me it. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram, same name as Twitter, MCOOP317. Make sure you follow me, guys, because it's a long journey for me, and my road is not over, so there's more to come. And hopefully, you know, Modesty will have me back up here, you know, to continue to talk about other stuff that's actually going on with me and my show and everything. So, guys, make well, sure you follow me right here. Yes. Yeah. I appreciate it. And uh, before we get off the phone, we have three minutes. Lord, I thank mm-hmm. you and I praise you for Michael Cooper. Thank you for this opportunity to interview him about his journey. I thank and I praise you for bringing him a very long way. Thank you for keeping him away from negative influences as he was growing up because you knew what direction he was going to be going into. I pray that everything that he writes down in black and white will come to fruition and will manifest. I pray that doors will open for him that he never even imagined, and even those doors that he did imagine would open for him would open for him. I pray that he will be blessed in everything that he does, and I pray that everything his hands touch will be blessed. And, Father, I pray that you will bless his family members. And if there is anyone in the family at this point that he might be at odds with or who might be at odds against him, I pray that there will be reconciliation. I pray that there will be togetherness. I pray that there will be unity. I pray that peace will continue to reign, rule, and abide in Cooper's family. And I pray, Lord, that those who might not have believed in him will see even greater things than they are seeing right now. Those who may have said to themselves, ha-ha, he's not going to make it, but never verbalized it, but thought it in their minds and in their hearts. I pray that they will see him rise as he is rising. They will see him victorious and that they will have to repent within themselves for the things that they thought and said because he is going to make it because he's passionate, he's determined, he's focused, he's purposed, and he is fearless. Michael Cooper will slay any giants standing in his way just like David Any doors that seem to be closed, he's not going to pay any attention to the no's because he knows what it's like already, but he's going to continue to to gain ground. He's going to continue to be noticed. He's going to continue. I pray for favor for him with celebrities, favor for him with agencies, favor for him with publicists and public relation experts, favor for him him, even in the music industry, with singers and artists, producers, favor. Bless him in his acting career. I pray that doors will open for him in that area as well. I thank you for increasing his finances. I thank you for blessing him beyond measure. 
I thank yes. you for keeping him and protecting him as he travels the breadth and length of the United States. And even if international doors open, if that's something that you want, I pray, Father, that the doors will open across the seas in places like London, in places like Paris. With you, God, there is no ceiling. With you, there is no limitations. There's no such thing as a box when it comes to you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for blessing me with him, with this interview. And I pray that he will continue to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Michael Cooper. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you for having me on the show. And I hope your show continues also to reach height back. That's beyond your measure that you can't do alone. That God can bring you up. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we will see each other in Twitter land. And like you said, we will stay in touch. Of course. Thank you for having me on your show. All right. You're welcome. Have a good evening. And I'll see you in Twitter land. All right. Thank you. All right, my dear. Bye-bye. 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 (laughs) Bye-bye.